Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're back to work on the Colombo Express, the Hapag Lloyd container ship by Ravel. This is in 1-700 scale. As you can see, in terms of color, the, the hull is, well, maybe 90% where it needs to be. There's some more details that need to be picked out, that sort of thing. But, I mean, at least it's hull red and black. And if I move her this way, tough to get it all in camera in the clutter zone. You can see we have the accommodation block. Um, and this is now an actual and an older design. Uh, the larger, um, hard to believe larger than this, but the larger container ships in this now will have probably maybe here. They will have a smaller, thinner block with the um, with the engine exhausts and some of the machinery spaces and things and then they will have another accommodation block and bridge farther forward for better visibility and I think the newest class of Maersk container ships are gonna have a bridge right up in the nose basically it'll be like a a thin superstructure here at the front and then almost all the way at the back will be the the block with the stack and and a lot of the engine equipment and vents back there so if you like classic Great Lakes Lakers the giant container ships are going to start resembling those so anyway enough of me babbling as I'm recording this, I'm actually still trying to get the pre-war rivals done, which has probably already gone up, but I'm taking a, a break from that to do some work on this that will help this move along. And I'll be explaining what that is in a couple of minutes. But um, pre-war rivals, as I'm working on this, are getting close. The decals have been done. So, if you haven't checked that project out, um, maybe take a look at the final, and the, uh, the, the card will be up here if you want to check that out. Um, I think it was a kind of a cool project. Hasn't done particularly amazing, but not everything can be a home run. So, let's get working on this. In terms of our accommodation block, the next thing I must do is give this a coat of white paint. I think I'm just going to use some Tamiya Gloss White and then I'm going to pick out the flooring and a lot of the details and things on here and that will pretty much do it for that so hopefully I have enough Tamiya Gloss White. I'm actually going to be using Gloss White on all the container stacks and you'll, you'll see why upcoming. There's, there's two main complaints that, that seem to be out there about the containers. And the first is all of the decals are for Hapeg Lloyd. For whatever reason, well, we shouldn't say for whatever reason, cost reasons, Ravel chose only to um, pay for the, the copyright usage for the Hapeg Lloyd logo. So... Um, Color-wise, this is pretty good for a container load, but you don't see any of the other major container line players represented by these containers. So that'll be part two of the things that I'm, I'm going to be dealing with here. The other thing about this, this is a very idealized container load for, um, for a container ship. Very rarely is every single row full height all the way across even before uh, the ship set sail from be it China or Singapore or anywhere else in the Far East they're not gonna hold this ship until every single row is 100% full no there's gonna be a certain amount of jaggedness you know not every row is going to be full height maxed out what you typically see will each row will be kind of a, a mixture of full height and maybe one or two containers down. So how do we simulate that? Because if you've seen the review, any of the reviews, you'll know that each of these 
sections of containers are not a bunch of little containers put together. They're basically a rectangle that's molded. I'll show you the parts in a second and I'll explain how I'm going to get around that hopefully. Now it's time to start putting these blocks of containers together and I already have cut out the parts for step 23 and we're going to do two of those but I'm not going to start putting that one together for an important reason. This particular stack has 20 footers on the bottom so I want to treat that a little differently. The one I'm really concerned with here is um, blo the block for 24. It's a very simple one. It has a 40 foot container here on like a, all the way across on the bottom. So we're going to start with it. And this is part number 79 here. And if we flip it over, you can see I've written 24 on this. So this way I will know once I'm, I've got this block all done that this is number 24 and that will help me get it in the right place on the ship, hopefully. So before I assemble this, what I'm going to do is all of these parts, and I haven't even trimmed up the, uh, the, the spots where the, it's been attached to the sprue, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the bottom layer of containers. And you can see that there's a, an arrow molded in here telling you what's the bottom. So I'm going to trim off the bottom layer of almost every stack of containers. But I'm starting with this one because I'm going to be saving these parts so that I can assemble some individual containers. So all of my container stacks, maybe I'll, uh, I might leave one or two full height, but most of them are going to be uh, one layer of containers lower. But it doesn't matter because when I, I build some individual containers, and I'm not going to have enough parts to make as many as I want. It doesn't matter. All I need is a few of them because once I have a few containers that I like, I'm going to use those to make resin castings. So that way I can put the container blocks on the ship. They're going to be lower. And then I can sprinkle individual containers on the top, like bacon bits. <laughs> um, so my top layer will end up being jagged. They won't really be loose and messy on there. They'll be sitting on there like they were put on there properly. But that's my plan for achieving my jagged con container load. So whether that will work, well, we're all going to find out, aren't we? All right, we're just about to put together the first of our modified container blocks. And if I flip it over, you can see that I've beveled. Now, this is actually the bottom edge. I've had to do that for all four sides because if we look at the, the bottom piece here, we'll flip it over. You can see that there's a little bit of a, of a notch all the way around there. And that's because this is actually supposed to nest up inside slightly. So if we want our, our blocks of containers together to come together all right, we need to create this clearance. Okay, so I thought it was going to take me a couple days. And it would have taken me a couple days if I had to just put them together exactly as they said. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I basically took a row out of every single stack. So every single stack along here, and I know they're kind of, you know, they're not lined up on here properly. Um, they're all in the right places, but as you can see, you know, some are a little askew. So all of these are one level too low. Um, or I should say one level lower than, than being full. And that's the way I wanted it. <clears throat> and the reason I wanted to get this done <clears throat> is I was using bits and pieces here. You, well, you can see all the little strips that were cut out. And what I did is I created some singles, some this is a, a three wide. Um, that's a three wide. Here's some two wides. 
okay and I've got a couple of that's a 28 footer and that's a 28 footer so this is a, a one wide 28 footer this one of course is a two wide so <clears throat> you'll have to excuse my voice I've had my I've had my boat with COVID it was two days of eh, annoying sickness but I'm okay now so having created these and I've got more kind of off-camera over that way having created these I'm going to make rubber molds of these and then I can cast a whole pile of them and then uh, as I said earlier I will be sprinkling them on the top of my ship like bacon bits on a baked potato and then that will give us a, a more realistic load because uh, the ship or the yeah the shipping companies that run the ships they would prefer to have these things 100% all the time and that may happen when they're leaving their busiest exporting port they may be they may be like 95% full the subsequent stops they tend to look pretty ragged because you know they'll offload 10% of their load or 10% of their capacity and put another 8% back on the next stop you get the picture and once they get to North America yeah their loads are getting pretty pretty jagged and, and rough looking so that's what we're we're trying to do here and we'll have to see if I succeed now this looks like I'm trying to do a 1 700 scale recreation of the great escape set but no <laughs> these are all the the blanks for the containers that I want to do in in resin so next step will be to be painting on many coats of um, latex rubber and this big piece of styrene right here is just because I'm using a really crappy old piece of sign and it wanted to bow that was annoying me so it's just straightening it out so yeah it does look like you know part of a little prisoner war camp doesn't it maybe we'll put fence around it after I'm done with it so in the background of doing some other work mostly working on the Father's Day build and uh, finishing up our pre-war rival video why is that how her why is that so hard to say pre-war rival don't know I've been slapping on occasional coats of latex on our um, individual containers not really individual I mean obviously these guys are individual ones but this is a double here's some triples here's some more doubles that's double so I think this is thick enough now and it's been a whole week since I put the uh, Father's Day video up since I'm filming this so it was kind of a wasted week of doing nothing but welcome to my world so let's see if we can get this off and because I'm filming the air conditioning has popped on and that's gonna make all kinds of noise So far the containers are coming off of the sheet. Oh well. Doesn't look too bad. Actually they are popping out of the mold pretty good. So I find that usually even if the mold has had lots of time to dry as this one has at least it's been at least two weeks since I put the last bit of rubber on this. Um, I find it's always best to kind of wait till the next day before putting resin in it um, just because you, you want to make sure that this latex which has actually been covered by many other coats of latex you know it, it's still kind of tacky so leaving it like this allows any last final chemical reactions drying what have you to take place before we'd start you know subjecting it to resin it seems to sit pretty flat 
which is good because when I put the resin in I don't want great huge blobs of resin because um, anything that is over and above my mold is going to be it's going to be wastage and it's all going to have to be filed off as a matter of fact what I might do that I haven't normally done in the past is I might put resin in the the cavities and I might put an object like a flat maybe like this on top and that minimizes the thickness of any resin that, that's outside the mold. We shall see. So I did it off camera because pouring resin while you're filming is kind of difficult. Um, really? The plastic bottle is so exciting. The resin I have is probably a year and a half, maybe two years old. I still got a lot of it left so I don't want to throw it out. So I thought I had a pretty good 50-50 mix between or one to one ratio between the hardener and the, the resin itself. But this is a little more flexible than I like to see. This was a little bit of the squeeze out. I'll show you the mold and the actual pour. So here we go. So what I do consider a success is the flash around the containers is very, very thin. So I'm not going to have to do a lot of sanding. Um, I'm not concerned with these little bubbles because they're on the bottom side of the containers. They won't be seen. Uh, like I said, my main concern is going to be how flexible these things are. So let's dig them out and see uh, how well or how horrible it turned out. So, er, come on, get out of there. Please get... At least get one out here. Okay, now it's coming out. So this is the top edge. Yeah, I'm not liking this at all. Hard to tell on camera what it's looking like. Alrighty. So it's been three weeks, four weeks since the last bit of footage I shot where you saw me um, taking these out of the mold and yeah, that was a big disappointment. Um, it's probably the, the biggest fail I've had in terms of resin casting since I've been using resin. Um, and it's not the resin's fault. Um, it's the mold. And actually, this one here isn't too bad. Um, but most of these have some sort of bulge in their side. Or worse, what should have been... The perfect uh, upper surface isn't. Um, if I turn this on, see, you can see it, it kind of dips in or whatever. The reason for doing it this way with a mold and castings was I should just be able to pour some resin into the mold five, six, seven times and come up with a whole pile of containers. Maybe they would require a little bit of cleanup, but they would have been you know, easily, uh, easily repeatable to, as I said earlier, rather, um, rather glibly to sprinkle on top of my, uh, stock containers like bacon on a baked potato. So yeah, this is not going to be the successful method I was hoping for. So... <clears throat> This plastic right here, um, of course, the camera's going to go into fits trying to focus on it. You can see how thick this plastic is. Uh, way back um, in my Arrested Development stair car video or video series, there was a bit where I bought this plastic and it's really, really heavy. Now, what I could do is I could cut this into strips that are one or two or three containers wide and use that as a stock for making my containers. The problem is, is this isn't quite thick enough to be the right height for containers. I would still have to bulk it up. And um, if you've ever cut styrene, you'll know that uh, usually what you do is you, is you score it. You will uh, cut it, 
and then literally snap it. Well, if you want it to have consistent cross-section, you can't do that. You have to literally run your knife. Um, as I once again, the, com the camera struggles to focus on this. Anyway, what you end up with something is I call keystoning, where if you don't uh, cut all the way through with a knife blade, uh, you end up with the sides not being nice and square. Uh, you can't use a saw because you would melt the plastic. Uh, a water jet would be ideal, but a water jet is just another one of these things I do not have. So I'm going to do some experiments here with this material and see if I can come up with a, uh, a repeatable method of uh, quickly making containers. What you're looking at here is the first container from my new process. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a uh, thick piece of plastic, then a thinner piece gets laminated on top. You can see that on the side. The doors are from the trimmed off pieces of, of the stacks of containers. And then I put a very thin piece of styrene on the top to replicate what of course Ravel has molded in. This is a single wide. I have um, some stock cut and I'm currently kind of in the process of building it up for doubles and triples. So that way, you know, I, I, I can end up with kind of the, the, the ragged stacking that you find on the real ships. Um, so it's a lot more work this way, but hopefully it will result, it will uh, produce the results I want. So I'm well into the process here and um, I thought I'd give you an overview of what we have here. So we have two chunks of styrene here, two strips. One is very thick, one is thinner. I've laminated them together. The gray that you see is basically to me a filler. I smear that on the on the sides and then I Use a sanding block to sand it down all nice and smooth because you're never going to get it perfect. And then if we come to this end here, you can see that that gray piece, that is actually part of the, uh, the strips of the containers that I've remo removed from the blocks that Ravel gave us. Because re recall, that every single block of containers I lowered by one layer. Here you can see a portion of one of those strips of the container doors. Now here you can see we have the materials for two containers wide and three container wide and that's what I've been going with is um, three basic elements. Three container wide two and one. So I will trim down this little bit that sticks up a bit. That'll get trimmed off. It'll all get squared off with the sanding block and then I will cut it to a 40 foot length or 20 foot length depending on the stack and containers. I know a couple times in this video I said 20 foot. I don't know what's going on with that but I meant to say 20 footers. The next step here, you can see that I've put a piece of thin styrene on top, and that's to give kind of the, the overlap that Ravel has molded into its parts. And when I trim it down, I'll make sure I've got a tiny bit of overlap at the back, and I'll aim to have some on the sides as well. And see if we can get the camera to pick it up here. Uh, I don't think it is. Anyway. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, we can see it now. You can see there's two scribed lines on top. And I scribed those in before I actually cut the strip of styrene to width. Um, and that represents the, the, uh, the seams between the three containers that are part of this block. It's easier to do them before rather than after. So once we've trimmed this off, then you can see what we have here is a block of containers and we've got a single and we've got a double wide on top and that's all we're looking for is the fact that we have a full stack and a partial and why aren't they all necessarily grouped together 
Well, when it left its initial port, this block of containers was probably solid. And in subsequent ports, probably they've removed some of them, not all of them. And I'm sure when they have the time, they probably like to group them all together in the center. But I've seen enough pictures of they, they just tend to be kind of ragged to know that, you know what, they probably don't always have the time to do that. A couple of days have gone by. Uh, maybe, maybe three days. I'm not sure. As you can see, I'm well into the process. These are basically the uh, first few uh, stacks. This is uh, the bowmost one, the forwardmost stack, working our way back. Um, this stack here is going to go in this space right here. That's it, make a mess of it. Anyway, so hopefully you can see the sort of effect I'm after. Now, when all the containers have been painted and they're a multitude of different colors, um, it shouldn't stand out as being something that's obviously been added. It will look like a ragged stack. Um, and yeah, we, we don't need to put uh, seven or eight containers on the top of every stack. All we have to do is just put sufficient on there to give the impression that you know, I mean, if we look at this rearmost one here, these are three containers. That's two, one, and one. So that's that's seven containers on that one. This one here has three containers on the upper layer. So, yes, the process is working pretty good. I'm reasonably happy with it. Um, now let's get discouraged. Yeah, if it seemed like I was making good progress, now we look at the full ship and yeah, there's quite a few stacks still left to do, but you know what? It's coming along. As I said, I'm reasonably happy with the results. And let's remember, I don't have to cover the entire top of every stack. Uh, some of these, I, I'm only going to put like maybe a block of two or a single block on it. Um, some of them are going to have a few more, but really, it's coming along. All right, boys and girls, this is about all I'm doing on this episode. I've got 16 of my 23 stacks of containers. I've got the extra containers on top, the bacon bits, as I said. Um, it hasn't quite been as arduous a task as I thought. It's actually gone fairly well. Um, mostly happy with how they look. And uh, if all goes well, uh, you won't look at these as being a separate creation on top. It will just look like, you know, more random height stacks of containers when we're done. I will be putting triples and doubles and singles on these back ones. Just not before I publish this video. Mostly because... Um, you know, I I want to get moving. <laughs> I want to get this particular video up. I know I didn't get around to painting the accommodation block, like I said. I don't think that's a big deal. I'm happy to have this process well underway like I, like I wanted to. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and just keep on modeling. I should have had it positioned like this. And that it all would have been in the scene. Uh, missed opportunities.